rat. Okay. Oh, I've got a lovely rat. I will do after all this eating. <laughs> I'm Tom Straker, I'm a chef, and I'm obsessed with all things food. I'm hitting the road loaded with cooking equipment on a hunt to meet fantastic suppliers and showcase how good local seasonal food can be throughout the year. This series, I'm heading down to the Gower Peninsula on the south coast of Wales in the hope to meet some amazing people and see some fantastic produce. And I'm fucking buzzing. <laughs> this is season 12. Hi Tom, it's Will, how's it going? I'm out on the marsh today, the sheep broke grazing. Why don't you come down and see what we do? Good weather up here, isn't it? <laughs> nice to meet you. So, uh, can you tell us a bit about what it is that you actually do here on the on the marsh? It's a good place, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah, we're, we're farmers in the area, just just over there. We're very lucky to be able to use this fantastic marsh, and it means that we produce Gower Salt Marsh lamb, and yeah. we're, we're very proud to produce it. Is this, is this pretty representational of what it's like? This this is a pretty accurate. This is yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, we catch the wind, bit of rain, bit of sun. This this is yeah, what we want. Been, yeah, you're completely exposed out here, aren't you? Completely exposed. See, it's like there's the... there's nothing stopping this wind. So Gosh. you've got to be pretty hardy, and I'm sure the sheep are pretty hardy, are they? They're, they're well hardened because, as you said, there's there's no hiding place, there's no dry spot, so they have got to get used to it. And if you, if you sort of look at them, they look quite content. Don't yeah, they? yeah. No, well, sort of, um... They look more content than me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are they eating anything different to produce like a different flavour? Yeah, or yeah, you get the grass down here is different, and you won't really find that in a field elsewhere. And then herbs then depends on the time of year, such as samphire and sorrel and sea lavender. And so it's super sustainable, like what you're doing. It's like they're, they're just grazing down natural it, habitat. It, gra it grows here, and everything that grows here naturally grows here. Yeah, yeah. you're not putting any fertiliser no, or anything like down like that. that. Like What's that. the flavour sort of profile? What's different about the? I would I would say in general it'd be sweeter and a bit stronger than red. Lamb. It's a very unique taste at the end. Does of that it. salt sort of permeate the the flesh yeah, I, at all? Or? I wouldn't say you get a salty finish on it, no. but yes, the salt obviously it, it seasons it, the meat dice, but yeah. inside in it, yeah. So okay. um, yes, yeah, very nice. I know that you recently got GI status on for the salt marsh lamb. Can you tell us a bit about that? So now, because we've got this uh, the GI scheme, the PDO, it means that our lamb is on the same sort of equivalence as champagne would be in France, where it can only you can only find it at certain standards from a certain area in France. Um, we're proud to say that our lamb is on that sort of level. Because we meet certain criteria, such as having the lambs on the marsh of over half their lives and things like that, it means that when people buy Gower salt marsh lamb from us, it means they know uh, the origins of the product and the the authenticity and the quality. Yeah. So, I mean, I've got a couple of racks from you, which I'm super excited to cook. We're going to set up probably somewhere out of the wind. Yeah. So it's pretty idea. fucking brisk yeah. out here, <laughs> and uh, we'll get, we'll give it a good cook and we'll try not to overcook it. Beautiful. Thank you so much for showing us showing us around down here. I mean, it's absolutely stunning. It's beautiful. I mean, look the rainbows, the sheep. My pleasure. The mar has been has been beautiful. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to see you. Amazing day on the salt marshes with Will, which is literally just behind us there in the in the distance yonder, where it's rolling in black clouds. So we're going to have to be quick with this recipe. It's got this four bone rack, French trimmed. It's from the back of the lamb. You can see that that's like the ribeye basically, and uh, it looks absolutely stunning. They, they age it about three to three to ten days, he said. Um, so a week probably. 
And this has got this is trimmed down, but it's got it's just got this little bit of uh, sinew on the outside, the skin. So I'm just going to take that off. So it's not this is this bit on the outside quite dry. It's the skin basically. So we're taking that off, and then we've just got the fat to render down. So. So the fat will render down nice and quickly. God, it's suddenly gone dark, hasn't it? <laughs> okay, to cook these nice and quick, I'm gonna take them into a two bone rack. Currently it's a four bone rack. So I'm just gonna go one smooth cut through the, through the rack like that. Two beautiful two bone, two bone chops, basically. I'm gonna season up the lamb. Just some nice flaky sea salt all over. Colder part of the grill, we've got hotter over here, colder here. Colder part of the grill, we're just going to sear this fat side down, just to give it a little chance to render before we then go and smash the colour on the lamb over here, on the hot side. So we just want to give that lamb fat a chance to render down, because what you don't want, this lamb's not hugely fatty, but what you don't want to happen is you just sear it off, give it loads of colour, burn the outside of it, and the, and the fat hasn't had that chance to render down. If it flares up, you may just have to move it just slightly off the heat, okay? Cooking is all about intuition and using your sort of senses. You got, if you see the flames flipping up and hitting the, hitting the lamb and it, it's burning, then you just got to like slightly move, move it accordingly. So it's a touch and touch and feel situation like when we're cooking over charcoal I can never say put it this side for one minute that side for two minutes four this side for five minutes you've got to use your brain use your eyes use your senses if it smells burnt it's probably burning this lamb looks absolutely stunning going with this beautiful lamb in season now is purple purple sprouting broccoli so I've just blanched these purple sprouting for a few minutes in salted water you see that colour there, Rollo, on the... I've turned it twice, got a little cross mark on it. So it's just exactly what we're looking for. You know, a few, few char marks from the bars. So right, we're progressing nicely on the lamb. Let's move on to the sprouting broccoli. So I'm going to do a braised purple sprouting broccoli with garlic, chilli, olives and anchovies. So you've done the top, you've done the sides, now you're doing the bottom. And that really should be enough to cook this pe these two, two bone chops all the way through. Lamb done. I've got this nice little overhang on my grill. So I'm just going to leave those lamb racks to rest there. So I'm going to go olive oil in the pan. Quite a lot of it. As you know, I like olive oil. We just want to cook this garlic down until uh, translucent. It won't take long. Medium heat. Good pinch of chilli flakes in there. Couple of anchovies. They will melt down into the sauce when we put them in. It's going to go beautifully. The anchovies add that sort of umami flavour. It works well with broccoli, works well with lamb. Like, and especially the fact that they've been done on the salt marsh, these lambs. God, this grill setup's fucking nice. I'm gonna add in the broccoli. Once you've got that in, you can take a little moment. Appreciate the view. Lovely sea view. Salt marsh lamb. It doesn't get much better than this, does it? Cooking outside. Next to the beach, you can sort of taste the sea in the air. Hit them with the anchovies. And just let those melt down into the oil. And just chuck a lid on there. We're just going to allow that to cook for a few minutes. Much more salt is needed, and we can go in there with a little bit of 
lemon juice, lemon juice, and some of these beautiful uh, pitted taggy ash olives, okay? Olives, anchovies, chili, they're all like big flavor enhancers. So like even one of them, anchovies, chili, olives, capers, that sort of thing, that's a massive flavor enhancer. You've always got to think about those those big flavours when, you, when you're creating a dish, something special, something that's going to bring that whack of flavour, it's going to whack you in the face. I'm going to flash these lamb chops, just a quick little flash on the hot side, plate's hot, it's all like fucking go, go, go time now. I like to carve them, so take them straight in half. Beautiful. Broccoli on the plate. Lots of these, these olives. Actually, all that anchovies. It's got all the flavour, it's packed a punch. That's Gawa salt marsh lamb, literally reared right there, cooked here. We saw them this morning, it was amazing. The lamb smells amazing, it cooks beautifully. That's with broccoli, olives, garlic, chilli and anchovies. It's going to taste amazing. I can already smell it. It's going to taste good. Oh, bit of lamb on its own. Mm. Oh, so good. Oh, that char on the lamb as well. It's just delicious. Mm. I'm just going to dip it in there, in this oil. Just look at that. Oh my god, that's good. Get that oil on there. So I mean, that really is seasonal cooking right where it's fucking made. And it is, I mean, it's beautiful. The lamb is so tasty. You can taste, you can, it's just rich, it's clean, it's not too fatty. And we've had a great time here on the Gower and that is like, just put a smile on my face. Cheesy.